Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the continual risk of heavy rain and thunderstorms over the next 24 hours or so. So do remember if you enjoyed my videos make sure you like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, links in the description. We're again focusing this video on the short range as these are the most immediate impacts from these thunderstorms and heavy rain over the next 24 to 36 hours and you can see by the live radar we do have some showers and some thunderstorms affecting southern parts at the moment. Now I know some people watching this video will be a little bit annoyed that they haven't seen thunderstorms so far and they may sort of see this as a bit of a bust, um, the forecast yesterday, um, but as I said uh, there's always caveats with convection, it's very difficult to forecast exactly where it takes off, we look at it where it's most likely to take off, but today, uh, especially this afternoon, we really didn't see a lot of thundery activity at all, but on the models, and a lot of the forecasting, uh, as well as the Met Office forecasting, did think there was going to be more showers and thunderstorms around this afternoon. Now overnight last night, into early this morning, we did see a lot of thunderstorm activity. Some people might not know it as it was really during the middle of the night into the early hours of the morning, but many southern counties did see quite frequent lightning strikes. Now, if you were towards the coast, you saw a lot more lightning activity, some very heavy rain, but it did have a very um, strong gradient where we went from really active thunderstorms to them petering out quite significantly as they moved into less um, well, more stable air further inland. Um, so we did see a lot of thunderstorms last night and we have got, had some quite torrential rain and some high precipitation totals. But you can see at the moment we do have some showers and thunderstorms forming right now further west. Now what prohibited thunderstorms forming this afternoon was just the cloud. Too much cloud didn't allow convection to bubble up, didn't allow the sun to heat the ground, um, allow that sort of spark for the thunderstorms to take off. But there still is a lot of instability around um, and things are looking clearer um, over the course of this evening and more unstable air is going to be shipped in from Europe and from the near continent. So we should be seeing some more thunderstorm tonight, especially where they have formed already. Those areas are at most risk, but still further eastwards and further southeastwards, we could see some more storms. But then tomorrow afternoon, for many areas in East Anglia, down through London, down into the southeast, that's the big risk tomorrow. But you can see these showers right now, they're forming. We did look yesterday at convergence zones, and this is forming along a convergence zone. You can see it's quite narrow with those cells along it, and they are forming as we speak. I'll have a look at the lightning detector in a minute. You can see there are a lot of active, um, or a few active detections right now as these storms are newly brewing. So we'll have to keep an eye on how that does develop tonight. But you can see there are uh, a lot, quite a few showers developing over Europe, and they are going to be spreading northwards as that low comes towards uh, the south coast. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that over the next few hours. But the risk is there tonight into tomorrow. And again, my usual caveat, not areas, we'll see all the storms. As we saw this afternoon, some storms just may never develop. In other areas, we may get storms that develop that are not forecasted. And that is um, the difficulty, um, but also the excitement of forecasting and looking at storms as they are so isolated. Um, in terms of where we see these active cells, 10, 10 miles, as I said yesterday, could be the difference between amazing lightning strikes and a very active storm um, to leaving nothing. Um, so we just got to keep an eye over the next um, sort of 24 hours or so. Now another map just to show what sort of thunderstorms we saw last night is the 24 four hour precipitation totals. Now they are radar estimates, they're not exact precipitation totals, but it does give you a very good idea of where we saw those thunderstorms last night into early hours of this morning. And you can see where the, all these yellow areas where we saw big thunderstorm cells come through. And you can see they didn't travel too far inland, apart from sort of Winchester into Salisbury, we saw a few storms go through there, Portsmouth, down to Bournemouth, and then all the way across um, Bridport. And then Weymouth as well it does look like it got a real battering from a lot of heavy rain. And again, a few storm cells moved into Kent as well, and even got as far inland as Guildford. But you can see there was a very, very strong um, sort of drop off in storm activity from uh, just south of the M4, really. Um, and 
it just shows you how difficult it is forecasting these storms as on another day instability is a bit further northwards and then suddenly s london sees some big storms um but unfortunately for those storm lovers out there it didn't quite come off but it just shows you that it wasn't a complete bust um these storms even though many areas in the yellow warning especially towards the london area um and northwards and then especially down into far south west there West areas didn't really see any active storms, even though they're in the act uh, in the thunderstorm warning area. Um, you can just see there was still a lot of thunderstorms around. It just didn't quite land um, for some people this time. But hopefully, though, for those storm lovers out there, tomorrow is looking a lot more encouraging for the storms, especially in this eastern quadrant again. So if we do have a look at the lightning detector, you can see there are two active cells at the moment in central southern England, heading into southwestern areas. Um, and as I said, these storms are brewing right now. So I suspect as we speak, this is actually a lot higher than that. So this is as of about 15, 20 minutes ago, um, as I'm recording as it does have a bit of a delay. So these storms are a lot more active and you can see there are some active storms over Europe. There's one actually out in the channel um, coming or North Sea coming into East Anglia. So I have to keep an eye on those as they potentially could start to develop as they head in um, from the east and these storms as well which could be uh, sort of the trigger point for some storms further southeast so we just have to keep an eye on it as i say convection is so difficult to forecast we just got to look at the likelihood of seeing storms and it's looking quite likely tonight many areas in south wales down in the southwest and central southern england will be within a chance of seeing some quite significant storms and then through tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon and then that sh that interest does shift further eastwards and this is broadly what we were looking at yesterday we did say there was that feature and that there was those conversion lines further south and further westwards and that's why we're seeing these storms right now um so if we do uh if we do have a look at the latest weather warnings they haven't changed from yesterday but i'll run through them very quickly for anyone who hasn't seen them we do have yellow thunderstorm warning um out and the met office have said although many areas will miss the worst thunderstorms may lead to some travel uh disruption now it was updated earlier this morning um so i suspect that's what they've changed um to basically cover their backs a little bit um as many areas in this yellow thunderstorm warning haven't seen really anything today um, or at least um, in daylight today. There were some thunderstorms, of course, very early this morning. But thunderstorms will affect some southern areas overnight and early this morning have largely faded now. But slow-moving thunderstorms are likely to develop by Saturday afternoon. Didn't really develop across southern counties of England, but they are now starting to develop as we head into the evening. And they say only easing, uh, easing only slowly through the evening. So there is a, still a lot of instability around, even though the sun is setting. And again, 30 to 50 millimetres lightning with the additional hazard large hail and gusty winds um, could occur in a few places more likely towards the east of the warning area so we do have more instability to the east and southeast but we've got the trigger further westwards so it's a very difficult scenario um, and if you are looking out for thunderstorms just keep an eye on the radar um, i'm trying to do my best trying to cover where the highest risk areas but anywhere really in this yellow warning zone um, does have a chance um, over the course of this evening of seeing storms. Now that yellow warning zone does shift further eastwards and further northwards into East Anglia, cutting off some of the Wales and southwest England. And you can see heavy showers and thunderstorms will lead to flooding and transport disruption in places on Sunday. Now, looking at the models already, um, I'm looking. I I'm definitely a lot um, more positive for the risks tomorrow afternoon. It definitely does look like there's going to be a lot more enhanced precipitation tomorrow. Now, what we saw sort of thought today was there were going to be pop-up storms. We're going to see cells potentially forming into multi-celled storms. But tomorrow, it definitely does look like heavy rain uh, um, and troughs, uh, a trough moving in, bringing widespread heavy and torrential rain with embedded thunderstorms. So it's looking very likely we're going to be seeing quite widespread rain in the east um, tomorrow. Just where we see those thunderstorms is going to be the difficulty. Warning likely to increase due to greater focus across the east of the warning area. So Met Office sort of clocking onto that. Very likely there's going to be some heavy rain. And there's possible for heavy morning showers across southeastern areas as well. So if we look at further details, after early rainfall in the southeast of England, showers and thunderstorms are likely to develop more widely. So yeah, initially uh, a band of heavy rain and then thunderstorms could develop within it or just behind it as we see clearer skies move in. The focus 
on torrential downpours will probably be across the eastern half of the Warnings area and perhaps across some so, uh, southern coastal counties further west. Again, hail and gusty winds, lightning of course, and rainfall amounts could vary between 30 millimetres in a few spaces or maybe 60 to 80 millimetres. And you can see it's high impact and reasonably likely. And as I said in my last few videos, there is a chance we do see sort of a very short term amp warning be put in force if the Met Office do see that enhanced risk playing out in real time. So if we now do have a look at the models. You can see at the moment with the Cape charts why uh, Met Office said the highest chance of significant thunderstorms in the southeast. We've got the highest Cape there. There is still some reasonable Cape further west, but where you can see those storms at the moment, it isn't in the most significant location, but it's where we got that lift. Now, beyond that, you see the Cape does only fade away slowly tonight um, into this evening. And then it does start to pick up tomorrow afternoon. Now, I'm looking at a more high-resolution WRF run than I have in the last few videos, as it only covers the 36-hour range when other videos only need to cover Sunday. But this only covers until early Monday morning, so it should forecast a little bit better. And you can see that Cape really picks up through tomorrow morning, initially in East Anglia, but spreading across the whole of eastern England. And you can see that's why we've got the enhanced storm risk in the east, and that's why the likelihood... Um, that's why that's called the highest likelihood, and that's why that yellow warning is covering that whole area. So as we head ahead for the afternoon, that cape does eventually wane or as uh, wane away over the course of the evening, um, and then eventually starts to start to dissipate. But storms kill, st could still rumble on into the evening um, if they do get large enough. Um, but they will start to stop sort of forming um, in the evening, and then eventually will dissipate just into some showery rain. Now, if we do have a look at the winds, we can see convergent zones. So if we do look at this evening, you can see these convergent zones here across the southwest. And that's why we're seeing these storms um, form. You can see it actually does spread a bit further northwards and eastwards. And you can argue, having a look at the latest radar, that's actually where the cumulus lim cumulonimbus clouds sort of take off. And then they start to really form into storms as they head further westwards. So you can see why we have those storms at the moment. We have that conversion zone across southern England into South Wales and southwestern areas. And just shows you the small little things that do form these storms. Now as we head through tomorrow, you see the low pressure system is just to our southeast and you do see these convergence zones forming in the afternoon. Now again they are subject to change. They can slightly shift position. They can not be really anything at all. But looking at latest modelling, that is the most enhanced risk along these convergence zones in East Anglia, down through the London area into towards Kent. And you can see there are convergent zones along the coast, um, as we do have winds coming from the land, hitting the winds on the east. So winds coming from the north across the land and winds heading eastwards um, across uh, the, uh, the channel. And that's why the wet office did say, within their warning, there was an enhanced risk also along the coast of... Um, significant storms. Now, if we move for the afternoon, eventually, um, you see they are there are still some convergence zones around. You can see it's a very muddled picture, and that's why it's very difficult to say exactly where these storms will form. Um, it, so it does look very muddled for the evening, but generally the cape will start to decrease. So I don't think it's too much of an issue through tomorrow evening. If we do have a look at precipitation or the raw precipitation charts now. Um, you can see there are those showers out in the southwest. Being forecasted relatively well by the WRF at the moment. Maybe a tad bit further southwards on the latest radar. And those will eventually move through. And then early tomorrow, to, uh, early um, tomorrow morning, we do see that heavy rain and potentially thunderstorms move into the southeast. Before, as we head for the afternoon, things turn briefly dry in a few areas before big thunderstorms pop off in the afternoon um, into the evening. Before they slowly sort of diminish away and spread and spread away so as you saw that is exactly where the convergence zone is and the wrf has got a quite a significant line of storms along it now it is not going to play out exactly how this model shows but it does show you again as i said the highest likelihood of those significant storms now if we have a look at the raw precipitation charts from icon just to see how it how well it's it forecasting at the moment you can see it has got the general shower risk pretty well uh, this evening in that southwest quadrant 
And then through this evening, you see those showers and heavy, or well, heavy showers and thunderstorms potentially move up into the southeast, bringing some more persistent rain into some areas. And the risk of storms for tomorrow afternoon, things really pick up. And you can see along that convergence zone, similar to the WRF, perhaps a bit further southwards and eastwards, this convergence zone. But that's where we got those green colours, green and yellow colours, and that's where we've got that very heavy rain. And, of course, thunderstorms. As we head through that, that eventually does dissipate into the evening. And then things look a lot drier for many areas through Monday for the risk of some more storms popping off as well beyond that so if we now have a look at the uk met office run now this is very again a high resolution model so it should forecast this very well and you can see it hasn't done particularly well um this afternoon unfortunately now this is the three o'clock on saturday run so you can see the uk met office run was still adamant of forming quite widespread thundery showers in the south this afternoon but it hasn't really come off just really in that heart enhanced risk where we do have that convergence zone is where we have seen those showers uh, in the last hour or two now the Met Office does start to fade those showers away further eastwards, and it does show towards this evening, well, as we're recording this right now, that risk uh, area where that conversion zone is does have active storms in it, and Met Office forecast, uh, Met Office run is forecasting that quite well. It just didn't quite get those storms correct in the afternoon, but very difficult, of course, as it all depends on that cloud on cloud cover and uh, very minute as atmospheric details. Now, as we head through this evening, eventually most showers do fade away, and we do get a little bit of a dry period, a bit of a lull, before, as we head through the early hours, maybe 1, 2 a.m., we start to see heavy rain, potentially thunderstorms heading to the southeast. Now, they are going to be imported thunderstorms off France, um, so by the time they reach sort of Kent area, London area, they could still be active, potentially, especially towards the coast. So some areas in Kent, if you do stay up quite late tonight, you could see some big flashes. Um, but I do suspect that they will start to dissipate um, as they head in that, as you see by this Met Office, uh, as, you can, uh, as you see by the UK Met Office run, it does sort of disintegrate in just a small steady rain before fragmenting away as it heads inland through the uh, uh, through sort of mid-morning. Behind that, where we see the clear skies develop, we see those big thunderstorms develop. Again, you see that storm risk along those convergence zones. Um, and again, we'll just have to see exactly where those do set up tomorrow and those areas could see a lot of rain um, as we saw with the UK Met Office uh, weather warnings um, potentially 60 to 80 millimetres if you do get stuck on that convergence zone um, and we'll just you know really have to just we'll just have to see um, really what happens with that um, all the models have really shown that convergence zone quite well um, so it is looking like we could be seeing some quite significant storms where that does set up. But you see those storms do eventually dissipate through the evening and things do look a lot drier. Now one thing I also did want to point out was have a look at temperatures through the next few days. As there is still a chance we see some quite hot temperatures actually early next week as the thunderstorms sort of dissipate away. Um, as we still do have some reasonably warm upper air, um, we can see as every Sunday... Temperatures getting up to around 24, 25 degrees, perhaps in regions that don't see those storms. But then as we head through until Monday, you can see actually temperatures potentially getting up to 28, 29 degrees or so. Now, it will really depend on cloud amounts, and we could see an isolated 30 degrees potentially. But it, again, as I said, it really depends on cloud amounts, how much sunshine does reach the surface. But just shows you we still do have some very warm air around. So... If the showers do dissipate uh, through Monday, it's very difficult to forecast the exact, uh, exact convection, um, but it does look reasonably likely. We could see some very high temperatures in a few places on Monday, and then again through, um, and again through Tuesday, temperatures could be quite warm again, especially for the east, maybe 24 degrees, for it does look like by Wednesday, things are cooling down quite widely, down to around mid to high teens or maybe just getting into the low 20s in the east so looking very very interesting over the next 24 hours but then beyond that we could have a couple of hot days before temperatures do cool down and things are very unsettled so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon